Hey guys, Zach here with Minimal Escapes, and today I want to share with you guys five tips that'll make maintenance easier. Now, I've got a lot of tanks, so maintenance can sometimes get a little overwhelming, and I know that it can be difficult to want to maintain some tanks, or even if you just have one tank, the maintenance, it's kind of not what you really want to do. So I'm going to share with you guys the five things that I've kind of found that help me maintain a whole ton of tanks and that keep the maintenance really easy and super simple. Now my first tip for maintenance is just to do with sort of the water quality and that is just going to be keeping a good bacteria colony. Now obviously you can't really keep this too in check unless you have a microscope and you can measure you know how much bacteria you actually have but there are some things that you can do that'll more so prompt having a healthier bacteria colony. Now the first one is just cycling your tank, giving it time. Bacteria needs time to colonize and reproduce. Right, but if you're already further along than that and you've got a tank and you want to add fish in, well, take a step back, look at the final picture of what you want the tank to end up with, and then slowly add in the fish. When you start a tank and you've got no fish in it, the bacteria that's in there is only going to populate up to a point that it needs to. Right? It's not going to overpopulate and start destroying all the nutrients and taking too much and then self-implode. Right? It'll populate up to a certain point and then there's no excess nutrients, so now they're just going to focus on surviving. But then you add in fish and now new nutrients get introduced to these beneficial bacteria colonies and they're able to grow even further. However, if you add in too many fish at once, you give them way too much nutrient and way too much to do and it takes a lot of time for them to catch up, but in that time you can have other things arise from the excess nutrients, like algae. An example of this, if I have a tank, say I have a 75 gallon tank, and I'm picturing like an Amazon style tank with some angel fish and some schools of tetras and a whole bunch of shrimp, great. Take a step back, so I want angel fish, tetras, shrimp, probably some form of cleanup crew. What I'm gonna do, let the tank cycle, add in maybe the cleanup crew, some shrimp, let it go for another week or two, add in my schooling fish, so whatever tetras you choose, a small school to start, and then I can expand more probably another week later. And then, you know, over the course of next week, maintain it, look at it, if it's good, you know, the next week you can buy your angel fish, and honestly, the tank's bacteria should have grown enough that it's gonna be pretty close to ideal for the colony. Tip number two for keeping maintenance easy is going to find other ways that you can expedite the waste from your tank. Right. Now obviously you can't really pull stuff out of the water, but plants can do it for you. So using plants is a great way to start bringing down the maintenance on tanks. You know, if you have a planted tank already, great. If you don't, I would say give it a try. It's really helpful with keeping water quality very high, like good. The other thing is if you have a planted tank, maybe try going with a super heavily planted tank. I like to try and put as many plants as I can in any scape and let them grow in because they just do that good and they're just giant filters. So I know that anything I put in there is gonna be very happy. Now, another way to sort of break down the waste in a tank is to get other smaller stuff. I previously mentioned like a cleanup crew. Now this usually depicts like snails, auto inkless catfish, and like a mono shrimp or other shrimp. Now stuff like this are great at breaking down excess nutrients in the water column and taking, getting rid of stuff like algae. So those waste things that you'd have to clean out by hand, you know, you can probably get some sort of inhabitant that likes munching on algae and is going to take care of it for you. So, if you're thinking about it, maybe try different ways to expedite your waste. Now, tip number three is going to be keeping your light in check. Right? What you'll see all too often is someone will get a tank, they'll set it up, maybe they'll cycle it first and then they'll add a bit more lighting, but they get their tank, they get the lights on, and they leave the lights on for like 12 hours a day every day, 
that's fine, but what you're gonna probably end up with is algae starting to grow. Right? You're just running your light too long for what's probably in the tank. What I like to do is I like to start my lights a little bit lower, so I'll run them like six hours a day in a tank when it's not super heavily planted, right? If it's super heavily planted, I'll start a little bit higher at like 10, but then I'll slowly start to work up. And if you want like 12 hours a day, you probably got to work up to that unless you start off with a super heavily planted tank, right? The light, if there's excess light and your plants just can't keep up with it, you're going to have excess nutrients start growing in the water. So you're going to have phytoplanktons and other uh, photosynthesizing bacterias in the water. And one of the things that does come from that is algae. So the excess light leads to excess nutrients and the algae really likes that. So it will start to grow if you have too much light in your tank. Now, if you're already at this point and you've got algae everywhere and you're thinking, ah, how do I get rid of it without cleaning it? One method would be the blackout method where you just cover up your tank with a blanket, a towel, whatever you've got, and just keep the lights off of it and keep it off for like three to five days. I found that when I do it, four days is usually pretty good. Now, yes, your plants might take a hit. The inhabitants should be fine, right? Shrimp, fish, they're pretty hardy, unless you've got something super delicate, and they'll probably be fine in the dark for those three to five days. If you're super worried, transfer them over to a different tank, or maybe have them in like a stock tub for a little bit, but try that and see. Now, with the light though, you can get to the 12, it's just make sure you're meeting the requirements of the plants. Tip number four for making maintenance easy is try and create something that you like. Right? With a lot of scapes, it's usually quite subjective whether or not you like a scape or not. Some people like some scapes, some people don't like some scapes. It's all up to you what you like and what you don't like. But try and make something you like because you're going to want to see it all the way through to the end. If I have a scape and I set it up, I've got everything complete, I've got it filled up and planted, and then a week later I come back and take a real deep look at the tank and I'm just not happy with the scape, I'll take it down. I have no problem taking it down because I know in the long run I'm going to want to see a tank that, you know what, I really like to scape on this tank, I want to see this tank prosper, and I know that I'm going to want to get the tank up and running and keep maintaining it for as long as possible, as long as I enjoy the scape. So make something that you like. Now my fifth and final tip for making maintenance easier is to make it easier on yourself, right? This might be obvious might sound a little cliche, but try and make the maintenance easier on yourself. Now, this can include an assortment of things. The first would be just getting the necessary equipment. And I really hated doing maintenance when I only had like a one or two liter water bottle on a 20 gallon tank, right? Dipping the, I used to dip the cup in, walk over to the toilet or sink, dump it out, and do that until I had the tank drained, and then I'd fill it up exact same way and that really made maintenance suck so I got just some vinyl tubing and a five gallon bucket and it made it so much easier and so much faster and I started to maintain the tanks more now this can also include like a gravel siphon right it's gonna make it so much easier for you and you're not gonna wanna it's not gonna be as much of a chore so the first one would just be getting the necessary equipment or equipment that makes maintenance easier. Another way to make it easier on yourself is either spreading it out or clumping it together. So on a tank, say you wanna do a water change, you wanna trim the plants, and you wanna gravel vac. You know, over the course of a week, maybe you separate it out. You know, you do a water change one day, and then a day or two later you trim the plants up, and then you do gravel vacing like two days later, right, because that's kind of going to change the water too, but that way you've got it spread out and it's cut down into a much easier and more digestible segment. Now, the other option with that is just to clump it all together, you know, pick a date and time, exactly, you know what, I'm going to do it at whatever, 8 o'clock tonight or 8 in the morning, and I'm going to do all the maintenance on this one tank, and it's going to get done, perfect, set aside an hour, and it's going to be a lot easier on you. So that's my fifth and final tip for making maintenance easier. Just make it easy on yourself and don't make it a chore. So that is everything I've got for this video. 
Hopefully you guys have enjoyed. Maybe you found it helpful. Maybe this will make maintenance a little easier for you guys, I hope. But if you did enjoy, please consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.